Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Greetings as always, mystery lover. Time for another Let George Do It adventure. Our little tale of suspense, uh, which, by the way, is called It's a Mystery to Me, has to do with a disgruntled bartender, a mystery story writer, and an elusive gal named Cynthia, just to name a few. And since it's rather a long story, I think I'd better get off so they can get on. Why don't you want a drink? Oh, never mind, never mind. Use up the stools. Keeps the leather in condition. Dear Mr. Valentine, to me, life is hopelessly complex, but with your help, it can be beautiful, terrific, magnificent. To me, life isn't worth living to without... To me, it's the... raining. Here, eat up the pretzels. They're for nothing. Stale, too. <laughs> Look, we're just sitting here, friend. You don't really mind, do you? Well, I was just going to lock up when you walked in. Library's closed, I guess. Got to read your mail someplace, only... <laughs> Look, we're waiting for somebody. We'll buy something pretty soon. Chin up. Why? In Joe's Oasis, it rains inside. Have yeah, some flat champagne. Well, business can't be so bad if you sell champagne. A couple was in here just before you. Happy, rich, showing off. You know, it's that kind of a neighborhood. Everybody wants something big and gets it and goes someplace else. <laughs> to you, life is pretty complex, too, isn't it? Look around, you lady. It's the only business I had tonight. Well, don't shoot yourself, friend. We'll take some coffee. Eh, big sale. I'm out of the red. To me, lady, it's as complex as a six-foot piece of mahogany with silver on the trimmings. No. And the clearest glass in it you oh, ever saw. Oh, don't be gruesome. To me, life could be beautiful if... Huh? What do you think I'm talking about? When nobody ever gets what they want. To me, it's the six-foot Superview console. What this bar needs is a television set. Only I haven't got the money. Never to... mind, Joe. I'll get him. Yeah, reading room. Telephone exchange. <laughs> I tell you, lady, it's the most beautiful thing you ever saw. Hello, Joe's uh, Oasis. I want to speak to Mr. Marlon King. Uh, King? Brooks, give me that letter. Oh, Joe. Hurry, please. Is that, uh, M.J. King? I called his club. Yes, yes, of course. Marlon. I called his club. They said he was there at the Oasis. Oh, I'm sorry. No, he's not. Uh, I'm here to meet him myself. You what? Yeah, that's right. My name's George Valentine. Look, can I take a message? Or do you want him to call you? Oh. No. No, tell him I'll write him. Tell him not to get in touch with me. I'll write him. I'm leaving. I can't wait hey, for him Hey, to... slow down, will you? Who are you? Just tell him. He won't understand, but tell him. Something's happened and I have to leave and... Cynthia. My name's Cynthia. Well, where can he reach you, Cynthia? I'll write him, I said. I don't care if you understand. I won't see him again. I can't see him. Not ever. Look, Cynthia. Oh, never what? mind. Never mind. Well... <laughs> she won't ever see him again, huh? Hmm? And Marlon King in his letter says, to me, life isn't worth living without a girl I've just met by the name of Cynthia. Well, that was a short romance. Nobody ever gets what they want. Said he'd meet us here at 10 o'clock. Almost 11, isn't it? So look, both of you, will you please let me lock this place up? It's raining outside. To me, I... it rains a little sometimes, too. All right, friend. All right. You are listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. Now back to Let George Do It and George Valentine. Mr. Valentine! Oh, here you are. I thought I might find you here in your office. Uh, my name's King, uh, Marlon. Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, we chased all over looking for you, friend. <laughs> never mind, never mind. Listen, it's this girl of mine, see? There's something terrible going on, and I need your help. You talking about Cynthia? She says it's all off. Huh? Yeah, grit your teeth, Mr. King. I got a message for you. 
Cynthia says she won't see you again, ever. Oh, no. No, she didn't mean it. She loves me. I know she does. She's young and sweet. Oh, I think we'd better go talk to her, don't you? No, no, we can't. I mean, it it only makes it worse. She's not that kind. I've asked her what's wrong, what it is, what's happening. She's so sensitive and she's scared about something. She won't tell us. Only Mabel might. That's why I need you. I can't talk to girls like Mabel. I can't. Hey, 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 one girl at a time. Oh, I know. It's complicated and mixed up and hard to... Just take it easy. Make it simple. Sit down. Oh, no, no, it's not. I, I'm so confused. To I me, can... life is complex. What sort of a person are you, anyway, that everything should be so... I'm a mystery writer. Oh. Wouldn't you know? <laughs> sure, so that's where I've seen your name. Yeah, scientific crime detection by... Mabel is Cynthia's roommate. Mabel works at a cheap nightclub, a cigarette girl. You see what I mean? Mabel and Cynthia, different as day and night. Mabel's hard as nails, but she came from the same small town years before, and she offered her a room. And then there's this skinny little dark guy named Tony who watches Cynthia. Say, look, tell me something concrete, will you? A locket. I bought Cynthia a locket. It's a beautiful little thing. She wanted it to carry my picture in. You know, around her neck. She wanted me to get a cheaper one. That's the way she is. You can see how close we are to being... Yeah, you bought her a locket. For $200. And she wore it, and she loved it. But I saw how envious Mabel was. She's that kind. And then one day, Cynthia said she lost it. And when I asked her, she was scared. She was lying, and and she cried. Two days later, Mr. Valentine, I saw Mabel showing that locket off to the housemaid. Mabel was wearing it. Well, didn't you ask Cynthia? She won't tell me anything. Just says she lost it. Wishes we could get married and go away someplace. Uh And tonight, she says, she'll never see you again. Maybe this is more than a Dorothy Dix case. Mr. Valentine, I know I tell it backwards. I've got a good, clear brain, only now when I love her so much, it's hard to... Here, help me with my coat, will you? Huh? This is why I kept you waiting. Oh! I had to have it bandaged. Somebody just stepped up on the street. Your shirt's all torn, your shoulders... Yes, my eye will be black in a few minutes, too. Just a big guy in an overcoat. Said I was interfering. I should stay away. Say, somebody really worked you over, friend. He said I should stick to writing mysteries, not trying to solve them. He said unless I stayed away from Cynthia, to me, life would be a marble slab. But she's supposed to be working. And I'm supposed to be at the wrestling matches. Does that signify Mabel's not here, I told you? Oh, it gets worse and worse. Now Mabel's disappeared. Take it easy, Marla. Take it easy. Where's she gone? How should I know? Dummy! Hey, hey Mister! There! Ah. You said Mabel's not here. The other guy, the big one. Listen. What's in there? The boss's office. And you it's the guy who hit me, the guy who beat me up. Come on, sister, come on. Who's the big guy? I found her, but you can't. Oh, yes, I can. So you act like Beaver Eagle, huh? No, 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 stop it. So you act just like... Wait a minute. Hey, see what I mean? They're Bouncer Valentine. I know it's him. I'm going in there. Oh, no, you're not. You're going to hold hands what? with her, yeah. Hey, let go of me. Come uh, but, on. but, boss. Yes, Mike. yes, of course, Michael. Get back to your work. Uh, sure, boss. And what can I do hey, for you? Hey, wait a minute. It's your strong boy there I want to talk to. He is quite busy. Excuse me. I do the talking to customers. I am Tony. Ah, oh, Tony, huh? Small world. Skinny little dark guy named Tony. What do you mean? So everybody works for you, huh? A big guy who beats up people and a missing Snoopy girl named Mabel? I gave her the night off. Who do you work for? Marlon King. Ah, uh, the innocent. The what? Please, I'm in quite a hurry. You have a subpoena. A subpoena? What do you But talking? of course, no, not at this time of night. My lawyers will call you in the morning. Yes, yes, the strong man works for me. It's quite regrettable. Such muscles in the head. Say to Mr. King, please, how I am sorry. My lawyers will make sense. Hey, hey, not so fast, Buster. Why did you sick the muscle I am quite busy. Good night. Suppose I ask you about a locket. Locket? (laughs) Oh, what's so funny? (laughs) Alas, the poor innocent. Now go on, get out. Look, Buster, I'm staying here until you explain what you know about a girl named Cynthia. What are you and your hired hands trying to do? You see? Gun permit. Permits me to have this gun. Never mind, I'll take your word. It permits me to ask you to leave. Mr. King, I'm quite sorry. For you, I don't want to be. Yeah, I can see you're crying. Just don't wait. To me, why should life be so full of stupids? Get out, get out! Oh, a 
Is it ever going to stop raining? George! George, here I am. Oh, hello, Brooksy. Did you get hold of that housemaid that Marlon here told yes, you about? Yes, she's here, but George, first I Miss have to Miss Brooks, I'm getting scared for Cynthia. These are the men I should talk to, dearie. Yeah, but wait a second. Look, George... we didn't learn anything, Angel. That locket. Boy, a beauty it was, too, if you like them old-fashioned she, kind she of... She knows all about the locket, George. But that Mabel didn't steal it or make Cynthia give it to no, her. No, it's because it my was... brother's in the buy and sell. You know, a pawn shop with trades, that's all. What are you talking about? And Mabel, she give it to me, see? You know why? Because Cynthia mm-hmm. wanted to trade it for a real gold set of earrings she'd seen in his window once. Only she didn't want the sucker who gave her the locket to know about it. What? <laughs> that Cynthia, she's something all right. George, please. Well, there's your mystery, friend. The innocent. She's so young and sweet and sensitive, so different from a girl like Mabel. No, no, I don't believe it. To me, she's always... Do you be quiet, Mr. King. George, the important thing is, didn't you see Lieutenant Riley's car? But listen, she's in trouble. She's in danger. Wait, wait, wait. What did you say, Brooksy? The mystery isn't Cynthia, George. It's Mabel. Mabel's dead. listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. And now back to George Valentine. To me, life is hopelessly complex, the man wrote. And for Marlon King, it apparently is, at least when it comes to love. Because his wonderful Cynthia, you have found, is not quite the type girl that she made the innocent believe. And as for her avaricious, snoopy roommate Mabel, well, even if your name is George Valentine, you will never know now. Because, as Lieutenant Riley so gently points out, Mabel has been murdered. Do I have to draw your diagram? Look at the place. Just look at it. Torn up like Coney Island on Monday. All right, all right. So she put up quite a fight, Riley. But you haven't here, told me. Here, here, here. That's the weapon. Don't, don't touch it. The skillet. Heavy iron skillet. Yeah. yeah. Grabbed off the stove, I guess. A single blow on the back of the head. The body was here in the kitchen hall. The porter found it when he came up to deliver something. Mm-hmm. Single blow. But all the earmarks of a big fight. The stuff spilled in the kitchen. The telephone knocked crooked. Maybe she tried to grab be for it. Be careful. That needs to be dusted, too. Fingerprints? Sure, in a crime like this. As a expect... matter of fact, she did try to grab the phone for help. Or somebody did. The switchboard girl says the light went on for a second, but then off again, so she didn't mm, plug in. When was that? Oh, about two hours ago. Doesn't remember exactly. Well, didn't anyone hear anything? The or... neighbors were all asleep. There's a back stairs to the alley off the rear porches. That's how the killer left. Kitchen door, huh? How do you know? We found the weapon tossed in a trash can up the alley. Crime of passion. Well, you'll have plenty of clues right here. Yeah, the technical boys are on their way now. But uh, you've already formed another idea. (laughs) Haven't you? Hey, Marlon, Mr. King. Uh, Here, Mr. Valentine. I, uh, I guess the lieutenant wants to see you now. I'll be with you in a minute, Riley. So this is the expert, huh? Knows all about crime, scientific detection, the habits of criminals. But when it comes to the habits of women... Oh, Lieutenant, don't. He's all mixed up. Yeah. He thinks he's in love with Cynthia and you I not... know. I've got it coming. But at least I was right about Mabel. I'm sorry she's dead, but, well, you know what she was like. Oh, yes, yes, my friend, yes. Little Mabel here was the kind of a girl who was always in trouble. It's not surprising she got what she did. I thought Cynthia was different. I mean, she Yes, was... you're so innocent. I know you got taken in. But the hired help will tell you the same thing you found out through that business of the locket she got out of you. Just for laughs and a set of gold earrings. To them, Cynthia's even tougher than Mabel, my friend. I know, I know now, Mr. But... King, the doctor tells me Mabel died approximately two hours ago. Well, now, come on, think back. That's about the time Valentine here was in Joe's bar, isn't it? Oh. And remember what we told you Cynthia said? She was in such a hurry. She apparently called from here, from home. She had to leave. Something had happened. But I don't know where she could if have... If life weren't so complex to you, you might see some of the simple things. What she was really like and that she was up to something and Mabel did snoop on her and what Lieutenant Riley means. Oh, I know where he's staring. To me, Cynthia was always... 
Well, Mabel worked for that guy, Tony, who had me slugged. Why don't you... Oh, we'll round up him and his strong arm, all right. To me, sucker life is simple. To me, that Cynthia of yours is an obvious grade-A suspect for murder. Well, Riley, to me, uh, Cynthia is a girl who carried gray gloves. Huh? Yeah, and a black purse with a big gaudy thing on it. Well, what yes, is she... Uh, she had one like that. A couple that. of suitcases because she was going to run away someplace. Oh, uh, what to are me, you... Riley, Cynthia is a girl whose body's been jammed into a closet out there on the back porch. Strangled. Yeah. Well, there's your original crime of passion, Riley. Dead, both of them. And unless I'm wrong, she's been dead just as long as Mabel, maybe longer. Yeah, it's not simple anymore, is it? No. I found the gloves over here. In a purse. Suitcases were thrown behind the broom closet. All packed and ready for a trip, wasn't she? Nicely dressed. No ornaments, though. Wristwatch. Oh, yeah, or earrings, too, from the inner... Uh, do, don't uh, touch any of that. Don't worry, Riley. I know what you're thinking. But I'll give you something else to think about. Wearing a raincoat, rain hat. In the suitcase. That's right, Angel. Packed and ready to go. There's a back stairway. And down at the end of the alley, a neon sign says garage entrance. Here, let me see your purse. I'll open it. Yeah, there we are. Keys. Car keys. Apparently had her own car. So she might have been killed just as she came out the back door to run down the stairs. Uh Uh-huh. And the kitchen door was open. So maybe all that struggle out here and through the hall was put up by Cynthia instead of Mabel. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? So what? Joyce, look. Hmm? Rejoice and be happy at Joe's Oasis. What? Matches in her purse. This is 14th Street, isn't it? Must be right around the corner. And here, a cork from a champagne bottle. Remember flat champagne? Hey, come on, let's go. Hey, Lieutenant, we got him. What in the name of heaven's going on? We got him, that Tony at the airport. He was just about... Well, 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 look who's here. Trying to run away someplace too, Tony? What? Look, what is this? I thought you had trouble when you came crashing into my... You gave me double talk tonight, Buster. I'll give it back to you. A champagne cork, Joe's Oasis. Mean anything? Well, of course... We were there, Cynthia and me, George, but... George, they were the couple who were there just before us. Is there a law against it? You have a law? Some more double talk. This is for you, Riley. His face isn't scratched, but he's got on a tweed coat. And if she'd scratched Get his coat... Get your hands off me. What are you driving at? Life is complex, but murder is simple. When a person is strangled... I'm one jump ahead of you, pal. They scratch, they fight, they claw out to protect themselves, particularly if it's a woman. So under the fingernails, you always... Wait, fight. wait. You... You said... Ah, oh, cut out the innocent act. You hired a thug. The girl named Mabel worked for you, keeping tab on Cynthia. Yes. Yes, Mabel, she introduced me, helped give me a pitch with Cynthia. The strong man, he was to keep Mr. King away. Competition, that's all. Competition? I was to the airport to meet Cynthia. I was to the bar for celebration because she accepted. What does that do? Where is she? Where is Cynthia? Take it easy, Tony. Look behind you. She was my type. Girl with realism. She tonight accepted my big campaign to marry me. Now look, Joe, the man said he was in here, in the oasis with this girl. Of course they were here. It's that kind of neighborhood. Happy, rich, showing off. Celebrating, they said. He said they talked about getting married. Yes, to right here over a bottle of champagne. I should hear love stories yet. Decided to up and do it tonight. He'd take her home and then they'd meet out at the airport. You know what I think? Only customer gives me a buck tip in five weeks, and she's got to go get strangled. Raining, see what I mean? I was talking to the switchboard girl, Mr. Valentine. I didn't pay no attention. I came walking down the street. This Tony he kisses her. She goes upstairs. He hops in a cab. Hey, what do you want my fingerprints for? I'm just amazed. Keep talking. Never mind. I ain't got no scratches on me. You don't think I'm big enough to choke a wildcat like that? All right. No, Mabel come in later. I don't know what time. That's all I've seen. You can't lock me up like... Hey, you! Blackfoot! Sergeant! 
Come back here and let me out. Take it easy, Michael. Take it easy. You're in for assault and battery. Now, look. The boss said he'd make it up. He's loaded with dough. You never saw such a spender. So I hit the guy. So I get conscientious trying to make an impression. Is it my fault somebody murders the boss's girl? I just keep his competition away. Yeah. Uh, Now, listen. I said, hey, you. Come back here. Hey. Crime of passion and not one single solitary clue. Not one single solitary fingerprint. Holy mackerel. Take it easy, Riley. Take it easy. It's almost over. Huh? Yeah, we've got our evidence. The murderer won't make a mistake, Riley. He'll slip. He'll catch himself. Me, life is hopelessly complex. That's what you wrote, Marlon. This is where I came in. Hey, you buying anything? We're waiting or... for somebody, Joe. We explained to you when yeah, we came... like chewing gum on a phonograph record. Round and round. I... I just write about crime and things, Mr. Valentine. I mean, well, I'm always getting mixed up with some girl. Well, don't tell Lieutenant Riley that. But why should he keep looking at me like... Listen to this, Marlon. A crime is like a story plot. It's only as mixed up as you make it. Sometimes it's simple. Sure, but... Now, one person killed both Cynthia and Mabel. Somebody waited for Cynthia when she stepped out on the back porch with her bags. She fought. She tried to get back to the phone. Then Mabel came home and stumbled into it. So our man's desperate. He has to grab the handiest weapon and swing on her, too. But why? I mean, Mabel was all mixed well, up with... it's simple, I said. One thing at a time. Uh, Cynthia's gloves... Huh? Yeah, those gloves were loose on the porch, weren't they? Well, she naturally would have dropped them. Well, is it the... likely that a woman all dressed up in a raincoat and carrying two suitcases and a purse would be carrying her gloves loose? More likely have them on, wouldn't she? What? Well, now, look, I understand the murderer went through all kinds of complicated cover up The murderer was frantic, Marlon. That's why both gloves were off. But they were on at the time of the struggle. So, Cynthia left no fingerprints. But how do you know the gloves were the... It's true that a person being strangled always tries to scratch a claw. But Cynthia's fingernails were perfectly clean. At the time she was killed, her gloves were on. (laughs) Now, you see what I mean? Don't get complicated. So the murderer wasn't an expert. Someone who would think to... Well, anyway, it it was a crime of passion. If you could call it a passion. Hey, Mark, this your oasis? It's a lecture hall where you get free lessons... Oh, wait a minute, Joe. Hold it. What do you want? I got a delivery outside. Make up your mind. Okay, okay. Don't let the rain in. You see, Marlon, the important evidence we got was from Joe here and the housemaid. Besides Tony, probably nobody saw Cynthia up close from the time she left here until she went up to her apartment. And what had happened here in the Oasis? Tony had asked her to marry him. But, George, well, I, I don't... She had accepted. A little engagement party. Tony's big campaign. And they sat at the bar and showed off. Only, uh, showed off What? A mercenary number like Cynthia certainly wouldn't have accepted a well-heeled shrimp like Tony without some valuable token. Lesson five, lesson six, yakada, yakada, yakada. Yeah, Joe? Step on it. Where do I put this thing? A box. A crate. What in the name of... Super View yeah. console. Six-foot model. Television set. Sure. Well, so what? Wait a minute. I didn't order no... T- oh, where do you see the aerial? Uh, a receipt to sign, too. Brooksy, a while ago you noticed Cynthia wasn't wearing any ornaments besides a wristwatch and earrings. Is that right? Uh, listen to me, will you? That, that television. George, I didn't it explains order... why the murderer ripped her gloves off. What he was looking for. Why he did it. That's it, Brooksy. I didn't. I didn't, I tell you. What? Uh, that television, I mean. Uh, listen to me. I didn't order... Everybody no... wants something different out of life, Joe. Engagement ring. Why didn't you mention it, Joe? From a person like Tony, it must have been a really terrific stone. What? No, 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 listen. That's set there. I, Cynthia I showed you the engagement ring, didn't she, Joe? And you were trying to close up so, so you could go after her. She was in here regularly, so you know where to find her later after she phoned and no, we left. No, no, no. If you didn't order that television set, why does it bother you so much? No, no, Maybe your I, I wife didn't. or somebody no. has already paid for that super view. I didn't tell my wife. I didn't tell anybody. What did you say? Grab him, George.
back to the conclusion of our Let George Do It adventure in just a moment. For the last time, Angel, I'll get this straight. I'll explain it to you. I was the one who ordered that television set. I wanted to break show. I told you before I was waiting for somebody. Mm -hmm. That was it. And it was a simple crime. Well, it was simple, all right. But I didn't expect to find the ring right in his pocket. Just did it for money. Yeah. Maybe he didn't even intend to kill her. But he ended up by having to kill both of them. Yeah, but George, I thought that Marlon Oh, came... no, no, Angel, not Marlon. You see, Marlon and that thug, that Michael, they gave each other an alibi. Didn't you catch that? Hmm. Yeah, but Tony, he didn't have an alibi. <laughs> Angel, let me explain something. A man who's going to marry a girl doesn't kill her, does he? Hmm? Well... No, he kills himself. George! <laughs> you have just heard It's a Mystery to Me, another Let George Do It adventure. Robert Bailey was starred as George Valentine, with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. David Victor and Jackson Gillis wrote the story, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Now this is yours truly inviting you to another visit with Valentine, when you will again hear what happens when you let George do it. (laughs) 